Hello, welcome back. So in the previous video, we have uh, discussed the concept of observability, where we try to get some data of inputs and outputs, and we ask ourselves if we are able to find out the initial state x0 from which we started to observe these trajectories. In the previous video, we have basically seen that uh, the important criteria for a linear state space system is here this matrix xi, uh, which I have defined, and we needed to find out if the rank of this matrix is full. And this is basically the content of this video that we will have a closer look in which conditions, under which conditions, this matrix has full rank because then we will be able to calculate x0 distinctly. For that, we have basically uh, seen that this matrix is a decomposition of C, E to the power of A time some time point, measurement time point, so which is this equation here. And using the matrix exponential equation, we can basically, again, write this in this series expression. And now what we're going to use, utilize is, and I will not uh, apply here any formal proof or something, I will just uh, apply the theorem, which is a theorem from Kelly Hamilton. And the theorem of Kelly Hamilton basically says that I can also represent this infinite series by a finite series of coefficients alpha zero, which are time dependent, in this case depending on this time tk, this measurement time, times c plus alpha one tk times c a plus 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 until alpha n minus one tk times c times a n minus one. This is the Kelly Hamilton theorem. In short, it basically says that any matrix, right, so this here on the right hand side is basically just a big matrix, must satisfy its own characteristic polynomial and this right hand side expression here is basically just a representation of the characteristic polynomial of A. If you do not know what the Kelly Hamilton theorem is, please go ahead and find it out on yourself. It's normally very uh, easily findable in linear algebra lecture books. What I can do with the Kelly Hamilton theorem and by this rewriting of this infinite series by a finite series expression out of n terms, I can basically rewrite this right-hand side of our data matrix, of the observability data matrix xi, which becomes then xi is also identical to a larger matrix alpha zero at time step t1 until alpha n at time step t1 to alpha 0 at time step, how do we call it? I think it was tn, yes. And alpha, so no, that's alpha n minus 1. Yep, because here we start at 0. Alpha n minus 1 at time step tn. So this is basically a condensed version of this characteristic polynomial coefficients, alphas, evaluated at different time steps. And on the right hand side, we will get a matrix C, CA, until CA n minus 1. Right? So this is the revision of this equation in this xi matrix for the different time points in a condensed form where we have basically just put all these characteristic polynomials on the left hand side and this matrix CCA until CAN uh, to the power of n minus 1. I will call this big matrix just arbitrarily matrix psi, it actually really doesn't matter, and this matrix I will call this like a big O matrix. And therefore the question is basically, uh, what is the rank of psi times this big O, right? And the interesting thing is 
that in order to um, estimate or in order to make a worst case evaluation of that, we can also apply the Sylvester inequality theorem, which basically tells us that the rank of the product of two matrices, psi times this big O, is smaller or equal than the rank of just one of these matrices, in particular big O. So therefore, if the rank of big O is full, we also know that the sum of this is basically given. This is not a um, sufficient condition, this is actually just a necessary condition. We will not go through the full proof here due to time constraint and will basically uh, do not go through the necessary proof also to show that. But the basic outcome of this evaluation is that the only important part in order to evaluate if the system is observable or not is this matrix, the big O matrix. And actually we call this the observability matrix. And one can actually show, so we could basically go forward with this proof, we could actually show that if the observability matrix, so if the rank of this matrix is full, so if rank of this curly O matrix is N, then our system is fully observable. So this would basically then the answer to this question under which conditions we are able to uh, find the initial state just by observations of in inputs and outputs. And the answer is, if, if this matrix has full rank, then we are able to do so. The interesting thing is also we have derived this matrix for the distinct case of a scalar output. So we just considered one scalar output because then this uh, rank criterion would basically lead to the invertibility, uh, to the property that we can invert this matrix xi and therefore directly calculate x0 directly. But the interesting thing is that actually the observability matrix also holds true for systems with more than one input and output. So this criterion here is also applicable to general linear ODE systems, state space systems, which have more than just scalar outputs. So therefore, the observability question can be very easily um, yeah, investigated. We just need to write down the observability matrix. So if we know the matrix C and the matrix A, we can just insert it here, calculate it, prove the rank if it's full, we have full access, and if it's not full, we know that at least one or multiple states, so here we have like two states, cannot be fully observed, cannot be fully calculated based on these inputs and outputs. And practical, what that would mean could be, for example, that we need to add up additional sensors, right? Because this matrix C here is basically a matrix which represents which states of our systems can be measured. And I can change the rank of the observability matrix by, for example, changing the structure of C by adding more sensors to our system and therefore trying to make an unobservable system observable. With this, uh, we will utilize this property in the subsequent lectures in order to find out if certain states can be estimated and if certain parameters from that can be calculated, can be identified, but up to now it's a classical uh, system theory property which will describe an important characteristic of a state space model. And with this, I would thank you for your attention and we will see you in the next video.